everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. I'm your host, Lasan Fay, and, well, I'm going to completely ignore that quest for the time being um, until I go back out there. Right, this is my jump button. Um, so, to start off this episode, I am, well, first of all, going to assign all of my people, advisors, namely, uh, new tasks. Because they're, they've all reported in. Which is what happens when you don't play for a few days and that clock still ticks down in the background. Which is nice. I will admit that is a really handy feature. Oh, I forgot I have a new perk. Um... Yes, I want to improve stamina. Or focus. I've that. arranged an accord between the Marquis and the Dowager. Wonder of wonders. Perhaps they can be useful to us after all. Alright, friend and Quarinus. My Lady Inquisitor, uh, considerable as your support has been, I'm saddened to report my motion died on the Senate floor. Although I'm hardly surprised. My fellows in the Magisterium don't enjoy the thought of having their freedom limited in any fashion. That was, however, hardly the point of the motion. It was a statement that needed to be made, and your support allowed me to make it far louder and clearer than I ever would have on my own. So I thank you. With any luck, this will draw support from those who feel as I do. It will also draw fire from venatory cultists still in the shadows, but I say, let them come. I will not back down in the face of such fools. I'm sending along a few things which I hope will aid your efforts, and we'll see what more I can drum up. Give love to Dorian. Give my love to Dorian. The poor boy is such a hot house orchid. He must be wilting in the cold. Magister Maveris Tilani. Okay. And everything else is in for Alden. Um, my dear Josephine, I passed along the news of Moye's visit to a few influential parties and implied that he was perhaps trying to butter both sides of his beard. I would describe the outrage this idea provoked, but that would make this letter indecent and your spy mistress would abscond with it. You play as beautifully as ever, my dear. I can hardly wait to see what the what de Moyer's next move is. Give my love to your parents. Yours, Vicomtes Elodie de Moro. Uh, patrol for the crew. The Sutherland lad and his small crew have reported in. Only minor trouble, as expected. Nevertheless, they have increased our presence. They seem useful freelancers. Okay, so thanks from Chantry Sister. Um... Inquisitor Lavalin, you may not remember me. I stayed at Skyhold for a time and later accompanied some injured soldiers to Ferelden. Our journey was more perilous than expected, and I only lived to write this thanks to the aid of the Inquisition. I have little to offer, but if I may help the Inquisition in some small way, you have only to ask. Um, Sister Paulette showed bravery and kindness in staying with the injured soldiers. She has already done more than what was asked. Let her remain with her fellow sisters in peace. Some soldiers in Crestwood wish to establish a place of prayer at the keep. Sister Paulette could assist. Um, I could arrange to transfer Sister Paulette to the Chantry in Denerim. Having a reliable ally in the capital's Chantry could prove valuable. You know what? I'm going to let Josephine that. handle that. Um... Jevlin was waiting outside the captain's office when Don and Brenovic slunk out defeated. Okay. We're not getting a warrant, are we? Jevlin looked almost relieved. No, Don and met his partner's eyes. The kid was barely 20 and looked like he'd walked straight into the Kirkwall barracks from somebody's potato farm. The taller, taller and broader than the other guards, Jevlin slouched as if he didn't know how to fit into his own limbs, as if he thought he should be smaller, hunched over in his brand new too large armor. He looked like a child playing at being a guard. He was too green for a murder investigation. Maybe it's for the best, Jeplin said, almost speaking Donnan's thoughts out loud. You're on your way out of the guard, and I'm... He trailed off inside. Questioning nobles in the middle of the night wasn't covered in training. Donnan glared at the kid. I'm a city guard, and so are you, recruit. Nobody gets away with murder while we're on duty. Jeplin stood a little straighter. What do we do, then? The captain wants proof, Donnan smiled. We bring her proof. Liliana has handwritten a note in the margin. Dead magistrate? 
the attempt to implicate Varric? Why? And in what? Um, if an assassin killed the magistrate, a word to the crows might tell us who it was. They watch rivals carefully. That is true. We could aid in the investigation. Let's see what we have. Do that. Got a coin. Um. Oh, do I need Liliana? Okay. I'll come back to that. That will occur next. Oh, Colin, can I put you to use out here? A Deventer resistance. I received some news from Iveris. It seems her little resistance has drawn support, just as she hoped it would. The thing is, that support comes in the form of idealistic magisters with no real power, while the ones who might see her group as a threat are the true heavy hitters. Reading between the lines, I'd say Mavaris is in more hot water than she lets on. She's crafty, but she could use more help right about now. Or the resistance might die on the vine. Up to you, but if you ask me, any enemies of the Venatori should be friends of ours. I like Liliana handling this. Um, send some Templars north. Disguised, of course. Real Templars, the sort who can disrupt magic. That should be all the help she needs. Um, oh, okay, I don't want to call in on that. Where are you best used? Okay. Yes, I've read this one before. Colin, handle that. Inquisitor. Because I get to talk to some people, and probably by the time I'm talking to them, I can reassign you. Dorian approves. Varric approves. First on my list, Josie. Messages are sent, as you asked. A situation requires your attention, Inquisitor. Noble Chantry loyalists in the city of Jader are spreading accusations that you're responsible for the Divine's death. Oh, good. They're unusually organized. I recommend we send people to Jader to deal with the matter. Uh, I don't want to show force. Mm. Will anyone even believe me if I claim I didn't kill the Divine? Perhaps if they learn about your heroics. We should emphasize how you stopped the breach devouring the sky. Even in Jader, it may win you a few admirers. What does the nobility gain by saying I murdered Justinia? A scapegoat to begin with. But I wonder if the Grand Clerics are at work. Those immediately eligible to be Divine died at the Conclave. The ones remaining were not as favored. Clearly. They may look upon you as a rival for influence. All right, so propaganda? Why don't we counter these falsehoods by starting rumors of our own? A whisper campaign. It would show those in the know we have some subtlety at our command. Great. Okay, but I actually wanted to talk to you. It's good to see you. What do the people make of us? We've gathered many favors among the nobility. They will be gently reminded of this. Any visiting dignitaries I should watch out for? You may see the Countess Lutetia in the halls. A lovely woman, but her conversation sent towards the unusual. She's the patron of Orlais' greatest naturalists. The Countess's particular passion is collecting butterflies. That doesn't sound unusual. She goes into great detail about preserving them. It seems to involve large amounts of chemicals and pins. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lovely. I'm sorry, this is seeming a little quiet for me. And that is why. There we go. That's usually about where I have the volume. A pleasure. 
Yeah. Who rules Antiva? Officially, the Principality of Antiva is governed by His Majesty King Fujel Nogase. In reality, Antiva's merchant princes rule the country in everything but me. Quite loudly, I might add. <laughs> What sort of dealings did you have with these merchant families? As ambassador, I attended Privy Council meetings in a mediatory capacity. May I just say, one has never heard an argument until they've sat in on 15 princes howling down each other's tariff suggestions. That sounds more like a mob than a meeting. It's all a part of life in Antiva. Our traditions value passion and romance. A certain exuberance of style. Uh -huh. Are you positive you're Antivan? I can be most exuberant when it's called for. Just at the right moments and in a proper fashion. Might we speak of something else? Sure. Um. What's the land like in Antiva? The settled areas are quite lush. The vineyards run as far as the eye can see in some places. Antiva City, however, perches right up against the Rialto Bay. That's what I miss most. The sea crashing against the maze of dogs. I have difficulty seeing you wandering around a trading port. Everyone in Antiva City spends time by the ships, my lady. The finest restaurants and poets all make their habitation by the sea. The waterfronts never still. Lanterns are lit along the promenade no matter what the weather. And do you miss it? Are you ever homesick? Occasionally. When a breeze stirs the trees in the garden, I sometimes pretend it's the sound of the surf. <sighs> do you know, I even miss those terrible squawking birds infesting the harbor. My younger sister used to throw whole loaves of bread to the gulls. Silly thing. Okay. You haven't really gone into detail about how you know Leliana. We met, oh, let me think, we met the last few years of my schooling, but we became friends after I became ambassador to Olay. It seems terrifyingly long ago now. How exactly did you and Leliana reconnect in the Inquisition? I discovered my family had been overcharging a merchant we traded with for months. Our name carries a great deal of trust in Antiva. I spent weeks arranging a string of favors as suitable recompense. Apparently satisfied, the merchant extended me an invitation to her estate. Leliana greeted me in place of the merchant. Yeah. I assume there was more to it than a strange way to say hello. It was a test of sorts. Leliana claimed she needed someone of painful integrity for the Inquisition. I accepted. Once she finally explained what it was. Do you remain close? Yes, but she's grown so much more distant than the outgoing woman I met in Val Royale. Leliana used to wander the Olesian courts, singing the sweetest songs, charming the greatest queens. Now she collects secrets and takes risks that would make empires tremble. I worry, but she will not hear it. Does Leliana confide in you? If she enjoys revisiting our more disastrous adventures. Leliana used to concoct the most ridiculous plans. Mm -hmm. Run if you ever see her with a twine ball, a measuring stick, and a handkerchief. Okay. That's some MacGyver stuff right there. Um. Alright, I've talked to you enough. Let's speak later. Farewell. Need to have... A little bit for next time. Because there will be next time when I am back. Alright. This door. Yes. Up the stairs, up the stairs, up the stairs. One, two, one, two. And... If you require any assistance. Vivienne. Yes, my dear. Tell me about the circle. I wanted to ask you about the circle of Magi. Of course. What do you wish to know? 
Okay. If the circle disbanded, how can you still belong to it? I've asked this. The circle is an idea, my dear. And an idea cannot be dissolved. Many of the first enchanters voted for rebellion, caring little that anything short of a unanimous decision would pit mage against mage. Rather than dissolving it, Grand Enchanter Fiona's vote split the circle in two. The rebels follow her, the loyalists follow me. Okay, um... I think I've talked to you about that. Can I assist you? I guess... This one? Is there anything I can do to help your efforts at restoring the circle? After the circles fell, their libraries were plundered by scavengers. A thousand years of recorded knowledge in the hands of bandits. It makes me sick to think of it. I've received news that some tomes have been located, if you are interested in writing this wrong. Yeah, sure. I'll look into it for you. If you can take care of this matter, the circle would be in your debt. In the hinterlands, in the western approach, and the exalted plains. Great. Well, I'm at least going to one of those places soon. Alright. Um, let's see. Leliana's is next on my list. Yep, I was right. Cullen would be ready to report in before I finish talking to people. Did you need something? Uh. They called you the left hand of the divine. That they did. What of it? What exactly does the left hand of the divine do? A divine always has enemies, and Justinia had more than most. I protected her. I watched, had an ear to every door. I identified threats, and I dealt with them. Why did Justinia have so many enemies? There were many who felt she was unfit to be divine. She had a past, a worldly life. Unlike many, she wasn't given to the Chantry as a child. She chose it, and somehow that made her unworthy. And because they thought she was unworthy, they wished her harm. So you were her spymaster too? I handled difficult situations that couldn't be resolved through more delicate means. You mean Cassandra's delicate means? I'd like to hear about Justinia. What was she like? A friend. A mentor. Like me, she had secrets, made mistakes. It made her human. I think her followers responded to that. How did you and Justinia meet? I met her a long time ago, before she became divine. Before she was Justinia. When I met her, she was Mother Dorothea. I was at my lowest. Broken. And she saved me. No, no, wait. <laughs> she hates it when I say that. I saved myself. She just showed me it was possible. Uh, fine. Was there something more than friendship between you? You're asking if we were lovers. Typical. I no. was devoted to her, therefore it must be romantic. Love is common. Love is simple. My bond with Justinia was something greater. She was a sister, a mother, a teacher. So to answer your question, yes, it was more than friendship. Fair. We'll talk more later. Okay. Ugh, right. Can't jump over the cages. Ah! Quick way down. And another quick way down, so that way I can talk to Blackwall. Your worship. Yep.
You're seated. I'm here. Um. I want to hear more about you. <laughs> Compared to yours, my life will seem dull indeed. You say that, but I don't think you realize how dull. Your name, Blackwall, doesn't sound Orlesian. Marcher, then. Ferelden. I was from the Free Marchers originally. Markham. That was a long time ago. Another life. Okay. Come on. I hear that many wardens were once criminals. You're right. And when you join, your past is forgotten, so let's leave it that way. Fair enough. What did you do before you became a warden? I was a soldier, a, a nobody trained to wield a sword and follow orders. I grew weary of fighting other men's wars. So you became a warden? More or less. Becoming a Grey Warden it was the first time I felt like I mattered. The life I led before seems hollow in comparison. Perhaps one day it will fade away. Why did you join the Wardens? Because they remember honor and sacrifice. Words that have little meaning to the rest of us. Because they lay down their lives for those they have sworn to protect. We all need to believe there are such men in the world. I needed to believe I could be one of them. Okay. We can continue this discussion at another time. Very well. Okay, because don't sit. Yes? Um... You know what? Tell me about the Let's Wardens. Let's talk about the Grey Wardens. You must know a lot about them. Ah, the Wardens. I'm afraid we're less exciting than we seem. Okay. How do the Wardens deal with Archdemons? Short answer. Stick it with swords until it stops moving. <laughs> this is something you can't tell me. I get it. That's just the way it is. Have you been hearing the calling, too? I know what Corypheus is. He has no sway over me. Okay. The Blight's been over for ten years. What do Wardens do when the world's not ending? There are still Darkspawn. Just because we kill so many in Ferelden doesn't mean they're gone. Wait, that's and the truth. world is not so peaceful that there's no use for good men with swords. Sometimes you have to figure out for yourself what the pledge to protect others really means. It's not always about just archdemons and blights. Where were you during the blight? I was in Ferelden, on my own, like always. Um. Quietly killed my fair share of Darkspawn too. Um. You haven't had contact with other wardens for a while. Why were you on your own? It's what I've always done. Recruitment only requires one man. Besides, I've always been a loner. Works best for everyone that way. All right. Let's continue this at another time. As you wish. I'll be here if you need me. Okay, that's you. So that just leaves me Sarah and Cole. I know, very chatty episode, but I kind of chatted to everyone else last time, and I am trying to make sure I actually get through all the dialogue, because, uh, <laughs> I didn't succeed with that in my first playthrough, so I'm trying to do better about it. It's a work out there, boss. Those blighted nugs won't infect anything now. Shay, thanks for joining in on that escort for Lady Montillier. Whatever. She's great, right? Hello. Training hard, Inquisitor. You have the best people, and we're gonna help. Great. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Sarah. I hear Vachel was good pay for you, Inquisitor. Time to go see if my friends came through, too. Got a location for a stash. Hopefully something nice for my trouble. Well, your trouble. Just let me know when you're ready to head out. Be sure to bring your empty pockets. 
this one. Um. I'm not ready to go just yet. Your choice, yeah. Only so long it'll stay hidden. Okay. I don't think this has been updated because I haven't done anything yet. Oh gosh. Wow, well, my frame rate's off tonight. I'm here. Um. Can you explain how your mind works? Yes. Okay. Walk me through the way you help someone. I start by listening. I hear hurt, feel it fretting. Some you can solve by giving something. Food, a blanket, sleep. Some are intangible, terrible tangles that catch on a crack, on a cr fix it, festering, and the person makes a pearl of pain. I shake it loose. No pearl, no pain. They can hope, they can heal. Okay. Sometimes you say things that relate to other members of the Inquisition. They remember me. Their eyes stick, some more. They want me to be. Varric is quiet inside. He pulls me more to hear. Makes me a person. Calls me kid. A friend. Solace, bright and sad. Observes and accepts. Spirit self, seeing the soul, solace. But somehow, sorrows. Hmm. What do you sense when you focus on me? You're too bright. Like counting birds against the sun. The mark makes you more, but past it, you reach across. Mindful, meaning. You pull it through to this side, make it real here. And past that, the weight of all on you. All the hopes you carry, fears you fight. You are theirs. It must be very hard. I hope I help. You do, Cole. I don't want to say that, because... I'll talk to you later. Probably. Hey, he actually said probably. Something like I'll that. Around again tomorrow. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Alrighty. Let me... Rearrange Colin. And then the perfect space for knocking sense into each other and training. <laughs> I would be not always going to make the best decision. I, I will make the decision that makes my character feel best. Okay. Commander, we conducted sweeps of the storm coast and determined where the dark spawn are most concentrated. Our Ferelden born soldiers are quite eager to see them driven back. Scout hardy. Okay. Outputting the crew. While I would never question the wisdom of the Inquisitor at such a contentious time, if we are to insist on relying on mercenaries acting in our names, I would ask that they represent us properly. We can't be seen to employ poorly equipped employ the poorly equipped in the Inquisition. More exactly, I cannot. I humbly request permission to outfit the crew Sutherland leads. Sure. You know what? To work? Heavy arm. I'm letting Colin run them. After all. Alright. 
so. The plans shall continue next time. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in. And in the meantime, in between time, take care, have fun, happy trails.